The top sprint car drivers in the country are in the pit area tonight. It's the World of Outlaws versus the Pennsylvania Posse, along with the ARDC Midgets at the Grandview Speedway for another Thunder on the Hill racing program.
24 car out on the speedway, Ted Schmidt out of Linus, Pennsylvania. approaching the speedway for group number two, first underway from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, in the Bumper Bob Seafood, Jose Arado, cars by dealers, car number U1, Chad Layton. in the 7TW, and from Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, driving the Canard Trucking, h and Contractors, car number 71, Brian Lepo. Brian Lepo in the 71 car. Mark Smith, out of Nouveau, Pennsylvania, in the Zemco Tool and Dye, Zemco Headers, car number 1Z. session. Safety crew over on the scene. We'll pass along a report as soon as we get one. Again, Mitch Miller, the driver involved in the accident, over between turns three and four. Just before the conclusion of that third warm-up session, we saw a lot of smoke out of the back of the elite landscape in car number 14 of Jason Myers. So again, uh, Jason Myers possibly with problems here during the warm-ups. They'll take that car back to the pit area. Crew Chief Steve Swenson and the rest of the team will go to work and uh, try to get that car repaired in time for qualifying time trials, which will be coming up very shortly on the program. We still have one more group of cars scheduled for warm-ups with the World of Outlaws. <laughs>
point standings, one feature victory this season, four top fives, eight times in the top ten. There's that time for Darren Pittman. It's a 12, 662, 1, 2, 6, 6, 2. For Darren Pittman's first lap, average speed 93.824 miles per hour. Second lap time for Darren Pittman is a 12, 8, 11. First lap was the faster of the two for Darren Pittman at a 12, 6, 6, 2. Team, it's Jason Sorwald. Jason Sorwald in the R19. Sorwald, former track champion in both the 410 and 360 divisions. The Skagit Speedway in Alger, Washington. Comes into tonight's action, 17th in the point standings. Sorwald with two top fives and five top tens in 2005. The first lap for Jason Sorwald, a 13.082. 13.082 on lap number one. Second last time for Jason Sowald is an improvement to a 12, 985, 1, 2, 985. Application, Hill Crest Auto Body, Cisco Hanna Valley, Harley Davidson, car number 22, the Cajun sensation, Jason Johnson. Jason Johnson in car number 22, one career, World of Outlaws A feature victory, did it from the 13th starting spot at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, Texas. First lap time for Jason Johnson is a 12, 993. 1, 2, 9, 9, 3 on the first lap. Second lap time for Jason Johnson, not as fast at 13, 0, 2, 8. First lap better at 12, 9, 9, 3. America, who monsters number 28 of Brian Paulus. Brian Paulus on the clock, currently 14th in the World of Outlaws point standings, one top five, four top ten finishes, two career World of Outlaws A feature victories for the 1996 Perseverance Award winner with the series. First that time for Brian Paulus, his second quick, a 12, 7, 29. One, two, seven, two, nine on lap number one for Brian Paulus. Second lap for Brian Paulus is a 12.734. First lap slightly better at 12.729. That will go car number 11E. It's Mike Erdley. Mike Erdley in car number 11E, taking to the speedway for his first of two qualifying time trial laps. First lap time for Mike Erdley is a 13.076. 13.076. Second lap time for Mike Erdley is a 13-0-1-7. 13-0-1-7. Number six, this is the Steel City Outlaw, Tim Schaefer. Tim Schaefer in car number six. Schaefer in the World of Outlaws point standings, currently 11. Two A feature victories, four top five finishes, seven top tens. For the former Kevin Goldberg, the world winner for rookie of the year, first lap for Tim Schaefer, third quick, a 12-8-53. 1, 2, 8, 5, 3 on lap number 1 for the former champion at the Lumberville Speedway in Sarver. Second lap time for Tim Schaefer is a 12, 8, 2, 0. 1, 2, 8, 2, 0 is next. Car number 13, the Brownstown Motorsports entry driver out of Edward of Pennsylvania. Here's Cliff Bryan. Cliff Bryan in car number 13. Cliff Bryan making his first start of the 2005 season with the World of Outlaw Sprints tonight at the Grandview Speedway. And the first lap time for Cliff Bryan is fourth quick at 12.911. 1-2-9-1-1 on lap number one for Cliff Bryan. Second lap time is a 12.854. 1-2-8-5-4, still fourth quick for Cliff Bryan. Excavating working group, car number one, the Bulldog, Kevin Swindell. Kevin Swindell in car number one. Kevin Swindell is 20th in the World of Outlaws Drivers point standings. Back in January, he became the youngest driver ever to finish in the top 10 in the World of Outlaws feature event. Happened at the Parramatta City Raceway in Australia. First lap time for Kevin Swindell. Fifth quick, a 12, 890. 1, 2, 8, 9, 0. What a good loss out of turn number four. Second lap time for Kevin Swindell is a 12, 992. First lap was better. At a 12.890, and Swindell getting sideways on the backstretch, entering the infield to go back to the pit area. 
So again, fifth quick for Kevin Swindell at 12, 8, 90. Next, I'm on to the speedway from Upper Black Eddy, Pennsylvania. The Prince Trailer Repair, Del Rad Auto Body, Mini Creek, car number 56 of Trevor Lewis. Trevor Lewis in car number 56. Trevor Lewis competing here at the Grandview Speedway with the World of Outlaws in 2004. First lap time for Trevor Lewis is a 13 086 13086. Way up high, exiting turn number four, has to get out of the throttle and drops for a 13-5-29. The first lap better by a half a second. A lot of Nashville, Tennessee, driving the Selma Shell, Bird Racing Engines, quality sound entry. Paul McMahon sits 10th in the World of Outlaws driver's point standings, two top five finishes, eight top tens. McMahon finishes the runner-up to Donnie Schatz in the battle for the rookie of the year honors back in 1997. First lap is quick time, a 12 6 one, two. One, two, six, one, two. First lap time, quick time this far for Paul McMahon. Second lap for Paul McMahon is a 12, 6, 86. But the first lap is the fast time of the night thus far for Paul McMahon with a 12, 6, 1, 2 average speed, 93.647 miles per hour. Seafood, wholesale auto, cars by dealers, car number U1. Here's Chad Layton. Chad Layton in the U1 car. There's that time for Chad Layton. He has a 13, 122, 13, 122. Layton, multiple feature runs in the 358 sprint car class here in Pennsylvania. Second lap time is better, a 13, 003, 13003. The official time for the U1 car of Chad Layton. Lady by Rider, who's your tires? Tony Stewart Motorsports, car number 20. This is the dude, Danny Lasoski. Danny Lasoski in car number 20. Lasoski is sixth in the World of Outlaws point standings. One preliminary feature victory at the Knoxville Raceway. Four top five finishes, 12 top tens for the former World of Outlaws champion and the defending Knoxville Nationals winner. First off time for the dude is quick time at 12, 4, 71. 1, 2, 4, 7, 1. Quick time for Danny Lasoski on lap number one. Roddick here in that car, second lap time for Lasowski at 12.695, but the first lap is quick time of the night at 12.471 for Danny the Dude. Listen, see the Shellhammer Speedway entry driver out of Shoemakersville, Pennsylvania. Here's Dave Cordier. Dave Cordier in car number 7C. Cordier, another one of the drivers that raced with us here at the Grandview Speedway in 2004. First lap time is a 13-0-51, 1-3-0-5-1 on the first lap. Second lap time for Dave Cordier is faster at 13-0-1-3, 1-3-0-1-3 for Bardo, Pennsylvania, the Zern Farmers Market, Lost Creek Coach, Tops Auto Body, car number 121 of Judy Bates. Judy Bates in the 121 car. Judy getting her first ever 410 sprint car feature win this past Saturday evening. First lap time is fourth quick at 12, 7, 27, 1, 2, 7, 2, 7 on lap number one. Second lap time for Judy Bates is a 12, 8, 8, 4 in the first lap. Fourth fastest time of the night thus far, 12, 7, 2, 7. He'll graduate high school next weekend from Fairmount, Indiana, driving the Wimmerluck Motorsports, Karen Drewluck and Rudy Investments, Gertie Engines, Mopar, Astro Titanium, Butler Belt, car number 7TW, it's Brandon Wimmer. Brandon Wimmer in the 7TW, 18th in the World of Outlaws point standings, and a first lap time of 13, 184. 1-3, one, 1-8-4 one, for Brandon Wimmer. Looking for an improvement here on lap number two. Jumps him up to quick time for Brandon Wimmer. 12-3-91. One, 1-2-3-9-1, one, and that is quick time for the high school senior. On the clock now, a three-time series champion from Germantown, Tennessee, driving the work in America, Jackpot Junction Casino, Mac Tools Mobility Mopar, number five, Sammy Swindell. Sammy Swindell in car number five, first lap is third quick, a 12, 566. 
12566 on lap number one for Swindale, 19th in the world of Outlaws point standings, one preliminary feature victory, six top fives, six top tens. Second lap is a 12727. First lap faster for Sammy Swindell at a 12566, and that is third thus far. Five from Altoona, Iowa, driving a big game tree stand. Country Motors, Clean Up, Osmo Poultry, Front Row Challenge, Ultimate Challenge, car number 24, Terry McCall. Terry McCall in the 24 car. McCall currently 13th in the world of Outlaws point standings, one top five, five top tens. The first lap is fourth quick, a 12597. One, two, five, nine, seven on lap number one for the sixth time Knoxville Raceway track champion. Second lap time for McCall is third quick at 12.532. Zemco Torland dies, Zemco headers, car number one Z, this is Mark Smith. Mark Smith in the one Z. Mark Smith, a couple of feature victories at the Port Royal Speedway already in 2005. Ray Lewis in turn three and four, in fact, spins the car and comes to a stop. So Mark Smith getting sideways and spinning to a stop in turn number four. Flag. If you're keeping track at home, the first time is a three minute, 13.667 second lap. Set up time for Mark Smith he is fifth quick at 12.574. One, two, five, seven, four, fifth quick for Mark Smith. There's entry driver out of Spring Grove, Pennsylvania. Here's Brian Lepo. Brian Lepo in car number 71. Lepo with a feature victory a couple of weeks ago at the Susquehanna Speedway. First lap time for Brian Lepo, seventh quick, a 12, 651, a 1, 2, 6, 5, 1 on the first lap. Riding the cushion through turns three and four. Second lap time for Brian Lepo is a 13, 006. First lap was faster at 12, 6, 5, 1. Driving the snap on tools, Redeem Racing, powered by MIN Motorsports, West Warrants, number 26. This is Shane Stewart. Shane Stewart in car number 26. Stewart, ninth in the point standings, one top five finish, ten top tens. Has one career in one of Outlaws' eight feature victory, came last year in Louisiana. First lap time for Stewart at 12, 9, 23. 1, 2, 9, 2, 3. Looking to improve here on lap number two. Second lap time for Shane Stewart is a little bit better at 12, 8, 52. 1, 2, 8, 5, 2 for Shane Stewart, 12th fastest so far. Global entry out of Thomasville, Pennsylvania. This is Josh Wells. Josh Wells in car number 6W. First lap time for Josh Wells is at 13, 2, 32, 1, 3, 2, 3, 2. Second lap time for Josh Wells, a 13.016. 13.016, the official time for Josh Wells. Jason Sides in the 7S car. Sides, 15th in the world of Outlaws point standings. One top five, three top tens. He is the 2004 Kings Royal Champion, picking up that $50,000 top prize there at the Eldora Speedway. It's his only career world of Outlaws feature win. First lap for Sides, 12.765. 1, 2, 7, 6, 5 on lap number one. Sides of the night, Timothy, 2003, Kevin Gobrecht Award winner for Rookie of the Year. Second lap time for Jason Sides is at 12, 9, 86. First lap faster at 12, 7, 6, 5. Bullet Joey Saldana. Joey Saldana in car number two. Saldana got his first checkered flag of the 2005 World of Outlaws season, winning the preliminary feature Friday night at the Lunarville Speedway. Seventh in the point standings, three top five finishes, seven top tens for the 1996 Rookie of the Year. There's lap time for Saldana, ninth quick, a 12-681. 1-2-681 on the first lap. Second lap time for Saldana is a 12.737. First lap a little bit better at a 12.681. Now there's Green Lane Automotive, car number 70, Sam Schlossberg. Sam Schlossberg in car number 70. 
Schlossberg, a regular on Saturday nights, the Lincoln Speedway in Abbottstown, Pennsylvania. Raced here last year with the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars. Here's that time for Sam Schlossberg. Tenth quick, a 12712. 12, 12 on lap number one. Second lap time as a 13.163 for Caravan Trailers. Full performance products, car number seven, the crowd pleaser, Craig Delansky. Craig Delansky in car number seven, World of Outlaws feature winner at the Bakersfield Speedway in California earlier this season. Also a preliminary win at the Manzanita Speedway in Phoenix, Arizona. Trailing Steve Tenson by 174 points. First lap, 14th quick at 12.806, 12.806. Delansky, champion with the World of Outlaws Come Out Racing Series a few years back. Second lap time for the crowd, please. It moves him up to 10th quick at 12, 695. 1, 2, 6, 9, 5, 10th quick for Craig Delansky. Pilot Travel Center's car number 11K. This is Craig Kinzer. Craig Kinzer in the 11K, last year's World of Outlaws Rookie of the Year, third generation sprint car driver, fourth in the point standings, feature victories at the Batesville Speedway in Batesville, Arkansas, the I-55 Raceway in Peebling, Missouri this season. Preliminary win at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. First lap is second quick for Craig Kinzer at 12437. 1, 2, 4, 3, 7 on lap number one. Does he have enough to take over the fast qualifier honors? Second lap time for Craig Kinzer. It is a 12, 5, 1, 2. First lap of 12, 4, 3, 7. Second fastest time of the night thus far for Craig Kinzer. For Jason Myers. Jason Myers in car number 14, third in the point standings. A World of Outlaws feature win at the Tri-City Speedway in Granite City, Illinois. Six top five finishes, 15 top tens. Here's that time for Jason Myers at 12, 731. 1, 2, 7, 3, 1 on the first lap. Myers completing his second qualifying time. It is a 12, 7, 3, 2. So the first lap better by 1, 1 thousandth of a second. A 12, 7, 3, 1 for Jason Myers in car number 14. That is 15th fastest so far. Car number 13X, Bill Bryan. Bill Bryan in car number 13X, one career feature victory with the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series, came several years back at the Lincoln Speedway. First lap time for Bill Bryan is a 13708-13708. Lap number two is a 13694-13694. Predicts all about racing Beer Hill Gang, car number 5W. It's Lucas Wolf. Lucas Wolf in the 5W. Lucas Wolf, very, very impressive during his first couple of years of sprint car competition. Ran uh, second for many laps in the World of Outlaws feature last year at the Port Royal Speedway. Second generation driver. His first lap time is 12th quick, a 12701. on the first lap for Lucas Wolf. Second lap time for Wolf moves him up to seventh quick, a 12.603, 12.603, seventh fastest for Lucas Wolf. And on the speedway now, the current World of Outlaws points leader from Bloomington, Indiana, the Quaker State QOs, Hoosier Tires, Remy Pilot Travel Center's car number 11, the king of the Outlaws, Steve Kinzer. Steve Kinzer in the 11, seven World of Outlaws feature victories this season, 15 top fives, 18 top tens, winner of the last two World of Outlaws races here at the Grandview Speedway. This one for Steve Kinzer is quick time, a 12, 3, 34, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, quick time on lap number one for Steve Kinzer. Second lap for Steve Kinzer is a 12, 7, 99, but the first lap is the fastest time of the night. Quick time for Kinzer at 12, 3, 34. 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, quick time at 96.319 miles per hour. Next on the speedway from Mertztown, Pennsylvania, driving the Wave Tech Associates, car number 63, here's Josh Weller. Josh Weller in car number 63. First lap time for Josh Willow, 13.678, 13.678. Second 
second lap time for Josh Weller, 13.357.1337. On the clock now from Fayetteville, Pennsylvania, in the Hop America Professional Building System, who's your tires? Pete's Bridge Street Motors, car number 25. Here's Lance DeWeese. Lance DeWeese in car number 25. First lap time for DeWeese. A 12, 917, 12, 9, 1, 7, 1, 2, and 9, 1, 7 on lap number one. Second lap time for Deweese, a 13.080. First lap was faster at 12.917. The nation's leading 410 sprint car feature winner is on the speedway now out of Sulphurville, Pennsylvania, in the Miller Brothers Chevrolet Materials Handling System Media Camping Center, car number 88H, past Freddie Raymer. Freddie Raymer in the 88H. At one point, the all-time leading feature winner in the Modifieds here at the Grandview Speedway. Last track championship here 20 years ago, 1985. First lap time for Raymer, 24th quick, a 12,996. 1, 2, 996 on lap number one for the driver with 12, 410 sprint car feature wins thus far in 2005. Second lap for Raymer is a 13,013. First lap better at 12,966, 24th out of the 33 cars that have qualified thus far for... On the speedway now from Fargo, North Dakota, piloting the Parker Stores, Delaware Trucking, Petro Stopping Centers, car number 15, it's Donnie Schatz. Donnie Schatz in the 15 car, fifth in the point standings, three World of Outlaws A feature wins this season. First lap time for Schatz, 24th quick at 12,917. One, two, nine, one, seven on lap number one. Second lap time for Donnie Schatz, better at 12, 843, one, two, eight, four, three. Come group, J&J &J chassis, who's your tires? Car number 77, here's Greg Hodnett. Greg Hodnett in the 77 car. First lap time for Greg Hodnett, 33rd quick, a 13.094. One three zero nine four on the first lap time for the former World of Outlaws Rookie of the Year. Second lap time for Hodlett, much better, 21st quick, a 12.844. One two, and car title holder from San Susi, New South Wales, driving the Segway, Castro Oil, Steel Dreams, Easy Riders Cafe, car number eight, this is Brooke Tatnell. Brooke Tatnell in car number eight, 16th in the World of Outlaws points, but five top five finishes, seven top tens. First lap time for Brooke Tatnell is a 12, 732. One, two, 732 on lap number one. Tatnell, one career, World of Outlaws, eight feature victory in 2003 at the Jetmore Motor Trucks in Jetmore, Kansas. Second lap is sixth quick for Brooke Tatnell, 12, 563. On the clock now from 40, Texas, driving the right one construction. Steve Mox trucking number 35. Here's Travis Rylett. Travis Rylett in car number 35. A couple of years back, he took home the $30,000 top prize in the non-wing ultimate challenge at the Southern Iowa Speedway. His first lap this evening is a 13-319. 1-3-319 for the former ASCS national champion in the 360 sprint cars. Second lap time is a 13-387. First lap Next driver to qualify, World of Outlaws Rookie of the Year contender out of San Jose, California, in the Beef Packers Southwest High, car number 83. Here's Tim Kading. Tim Kading in car number 83. First lap time for Kading, 20th fastest, the 12, 785, 1, 2, 7, 8, 5 on lap number one. Tim Kading, 12th in the World of Outlaws point standings, three top five, seven top ten finishes. Second lap time is a 12, 767. One, two, seven, six, seven. Next on the clock, from Wilmerport, Pennsylvania, in the ARG services, Frederick's Meat Mart, car number 81, it's Bob Bartleman. Bob Bartleman in the 81 car. First lap time for Bartleman, 13, 835. One, three, eight, three, five on lap number one. Bartleman's second lap time is a 13.910. First lap better at 
3.35 for the former champion with the Keystone Auto Racing Series, 3.58s. And your final scheduled qualifier this evening, making his World of Outlaws debut out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, driving car number 29, Chris Weiss. Chris Weiss in car number 29. First lap time for Weiss, 14, 6, 27, 1, 4, 6, 2, 7. Second lap is faster, 14, 3.59, 1, 4, 3.59 for Chris Weiss in the 29. And again, the 8M of Mitch Miller, a scratch for the evening after getting upside down in warm-ups. That will conclude qualifying time trials. Ladies and gentlemen, your fast qualifier in the Quaker State car number 11, Steve Kinzer. Kinzer turning a lap of 12.334 seconds at 96.319 miles per hour. Second fastest this evening was Brandon Wimmer with a 12.391. Craig Kinzer third quick with a 12.437. Danny Lasoski fourth with a 12.471. And rounding out the top five, Terry McCarro with a 12.532. Sixth quick tonight was Brooke Tatnell, Sammy Swindell seventh, Mark Smith eighth, Lucas Wolf, excuse me, Lucas Wolf in ninth, and Paul McMahon rounding out the top ten. Brian Field gathering up tonight, ARDC running wingless. They run either with or without wings. The D'Ambrosio Dodge official pace truck here at the Grandview Speedway picking up the field. Looks like everyone has answered the call except for the scratched Buddy Baker. We have Steve Lenning and Steve Buckwalter row one. Michelle Miller, Ray Bull row two. Mike Miller, Sean Burke row three. Frank Palomita, Scott Zip row four. Donnie Trent, Jeff Schell in row five, Dave Shirk and Eric Heidenreich in row six, Jeff Stelter, the final starter, and Buddy Baker has scratched out of heat number one. Ready to go. By a very famous sprint car racetrack in central Pennsylvania. We're ready, heat number one of two, eight laps the distance. Here they come. Ray Kemp looks him over, here's the green. Motoring into turn number one, side by side battle for the lead down the back straightaway. And Stevie Buckwalter grabbing the early lead with a number five car, dropping Lennox back to the number two spot. Here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. Ray Bull already on the gas with a Mega Motorsports car. He always runs well here at Grandview. He goes to the inside, picks up second. Side-by-side -side battle throughout the pack down the back straightaway. Buck Walter leading Bull second. Lennig is in third. Here comes the field for the second time. Michelle Miller with the number four and her dad, Mike Miller, making up the top five as they battle through the turn. Heading down the back straightaway. Battle now between Michelle Miller and Steve Lennig for the number three position working out of the corner. Lennig, Miller, Miller next in line. And then we've got Frank Palomita in the 44 trying to move into the top five as they head down the back straightaway. Comfortably leading the way right now. Buckwalter out in front with the number five car. Stevie Buckwalter, winner of the ARDC opener, just recently at the Williams Grove Speedway, heading down the back straightaway. Four car battle for third on the back straightaway. Right now, Lennig battling it out with Michelle Miller heading off the turn. Michelle Miller now feeling the heat from Polamita who got around Mike Miller now. Four car battle under a blanket out of turn number two. Heading down the back straightaway. Two lap signal coming up, two more circuits. For the number five, we got a car in trouble, turn one. Red fly coming out, turn number one. Jeff Shell, the 75, getting upside down. He's out of Phoenixville. He's in the Spina and Adams Collision Service, number 75. Field under red with five laps completed. Barry Angstad joining us with the American Racing Drivers Club. Uh, give us a little look at how our uh, Jeff Shell's been doing so far this year while we wait for a report. Well, Jeff's a rookie with the ARDC Midgets this year. His dad, Fred Shell, longtime supporter of the club. In fact, Fred is the treasurer of the American Racing Drivers Club. One, 
And we are just waiting to hear a Well, all right, pace truck, turn signals on, means he's heading to the infield. Six cars in our pit area tonight for ARDC competition. A great turnout here tonight at the Grandview Speedway. We're ready to go. It's up to Buckwater to hit the throttle when they get here in turn number four at the cone. Ray Kemp, your starter, looks him over. Here's the green. Into the turn, Ray Bull looks, lifts that left front off the racetrack, trying to keep pace with Buckwalter. Heading down the back straightaway. Whoa, good battle on the back straightaway. Donnie Trent in the 18, trying to get by Mike Miller, looking for the inside. Two laps to go on the home shoot. Polomita battling Michelle Miller. Donnie Trent battling it out with Mike Miller into the turn. Trent trying the outside, groove down the back, gets a little too high, skates up across the racetrack. Here comes the field for the white flag. One lap to go on your leader, Steve Buckwalter. Ray Bull unable to catch him now as they work out of turn number two. Good battle behind Steve Lenning. He's in third. Miller battling Palomita. Palomita to the inside on the back straightaway. Side by side. Here comes the checker for Steve Buckwalter, your winner. Runner up is Bull. Third is Lenning. Fourth will be Michelle Miller over Palomita. Heat race number one. Into the record books, taking the victory. The number five is Steve Buckwalter. Heat race number one behind that wild Hummer H2 pace vehicle from Hummers Gone Wild. Visit them online, www.hummersgonewild.com. We look for the green flag at that stripe over in turn four the next time by. 26 Shane Stewart, 28 Brian Paulus in row number one. 121 Judy Bates, 5W Lucas Wolf in row two. 1Z Mark Smith, 11 Steve Kinzer in row three. 13 Cliff Bryan, or 19 Jason Solwald in row four. 6W Josh Wells, 63 Josh Weller in row number five. Shane Stewart on the pole. Brian Paulus outside the front row. They reach that truck stripe and the green flag flies for heat race number one. Down the front row, they go side by side. Paulus on top. He gets the lead. Running second will be Shane Stewart, Judy Bates third, Lucas Wolf fourth, and Steve Kinzer right now in the fifth and final transfer spot. Kinzer looks to the inside of Lucas Wolf and turns three and four. They go wheel to wheel down the front straightaway. Out in front of the field, your leader. Brian Paulus in the Pender Motorsports car number 28. Paulus leading at Shane Stewart second. Now Steve Kinzer up to third, getting by Lucas Wolf and Judy Bates. Bates still in fourth, and Lucas Wolf leading on to that fifth and final transfer position. Now trouble for Judy Bates in the low upside down on the front straightaway. Judy Bates catches the wall, exiting turn number four, and gets upside down in car number 121 to bring out the red flag. Tough break for the uh, lady out of Bardo, Pennsylvania, coming off of her first 410 sprint car feature win Saturday night at the Port Royal Speedway. And good news from the front stretch report over the receiver's radio system. Judy Bates is okay. Judy Bates is okay in the 121. But what a disappointment for her. She was running in a transfer spot, Jeff, before she caught the ball, getting high out of turn number four. That's for sure. What a heartbreaker. After time trialing very well tonight, uh, as John said, coming off that big victory, first 410 career win at Port Royal, and uh, timing very well here at what you might call her home track. She gets to race here at all the Thunder on the Hill events, living right down the street in Bartow, Pennsylvania, and uh, battling it out with Steve Kinzer and Lucas Wolf. Got a little high coming out of four, clipped the wall, turned her sideways, dug in, and the car went over. Judy now climbing out of the car and walking around to survey the damage. Three laps complete in this first World of Outlaws 10-lap heat race event. Brian Paulus leading it in the 28 car. Shane Stewart running second in the 26. Steve Kinzer third in the 11. Lucas Wolf will move up to fourth in car number 5W, and it'll move the R19 of Jason Solwald up into the fifth and final transfer position. New clean, the 121, as you can see, apparently not any super serious damage. They are actually going to push the race car off the speedway 
Uh, tow truck not necessary. Certainly some wing damage. Uh, was not a violent flip. What neutral turf, you might say, because this is not a regular weekly sprint car racetrack. But the uh, 410 sprints, of course, visit here three times a year. Any driver improving his position before he reaches the cone, hitting the cone or passing to the inside of the cone would be sent to the rear of the field. Brian Paulus paces the field but down the back straightaway. They roll slowly into turns three and four. Now the RPMs increase and we go back to green flag action. Kids are to the inside of Shane Stewart. Meanwhile, Solo trying to take the four spot from Lucas Wood. Neither driver successful through turns one and two. Paulus works the cushion in three and four. Steve Kinsler down on the bottom, running in the third spot. Mark Smith trying to gain some ground on the R19 for the final transfer spot. Can't make anything happen in turns one and two. This time by halfway home. Five laps down, five laps to go. Still Brian Paulus leading it. Now Mark Smith fall over Jason Solo. The battle is for the fifth and final transfer spot in the turns one and two. Smith was right on the back bumper. Solo got a nice run on the cushion in one and two. Pulls away by three Corlins. Paulus, Stewart, Kinsler, Rope, and Solo in the top five. Smith in sixth. Rope in seventh. Brian in eighth. Willow running in the ninth spot. Race leader Brian Paul is turning laps in the mid 12 second bracket at over 92 miles per hour for an average speed. Cushion moving up very high on the racetrack, exiting turns two and four. This time across the start finish line, eight laps complete, two laps to go. Brian Paul is with an eight tenth of a second advantage over Shane Stewart. Looking at a white flag this time by, slower car in front of him, may not have to deal with the traffic before the checker falls on this one. They roll down the back stretch. And into the final corner, checker flag waves on heat race number one, and with Brian Pellis collecting the victory. Shane Stewart second, Steve Kinzer third, Lucas Wolf fourth, and Jason Solov in fifth. Here is the official finish of heat race number one. Brian Paulus winning it in the Arnold Transportation 28. Shane Stewart second in the Snap-on Tools 26. Steve Kinzer third in the Quaker State 11. Fourth in the Alabac Racing 5W of Lucas Wolf. And the final transfer spot fifth goes to Jason Solard in the Citywide Insulation R19. Finishing sixth, the 1Z of Mark Smith. Seventh, the 6W of Josh Wells. Eighth, the 13 of Cliff Bryan. Ninth, the 63 of Josh Weller. And credited with 10th, the 121 of Judy Bates. Number one, Paul McMahon scheduled to start outside the second row in this one and getting one push already. So even if he is able to refire that machine, he'll have to go to the rear of the field. Wait for a report over the receiver's radio system. See if McMahon tries to refire the car, it goes to the work area. And he is going to the work area. Sonny Kratzer and crew will go to work on that machine. Preliminary report indicates possible ignition box problems for the Selma Shell 11H of Paul McMahon. Greg Hodnett and Jason Myers, the 77 and the 14 in the front row. 70, Sam Schlossberg, 7, TW, Brandon Wimmer now in row 2. 5, Sammy Swindell, 22, Jason Johnson in row 3. The 1 of Kevin Swindell, the 13X of Bill Bryan in row 4. And the 11E of Mike Erdley will round out the field. Now it looks like the 13X of Bill Bryan is elected to go to the back of the pack for this one. Flag moves that will not stay out for very long. Caution flag will be displayed momentarily. No start to call from the Road of Outlaws officials. Caution lights back out on the speedway. Road of Outlaws officials not satisfied with the start of that one. We re rack and restack. Try it one more time. Greg Hodnett and Jason Myers. Road of Outlaws Day feature win coming just about a year ago at the Hagerstown Speedway in Hagerstown, Maryland. Much better start this time by. We race down to the green. Side by side. Across the third finish line. Hodnett down low. Myers on the top. They're still real. The wheel give it to Myers on the top side out of turn number two. Kevin Swindell, the man on the move, has gotten by. Jason Johnson now slide job on his father. Move Kevin Swindell around. Sammy Swindell up into the fifth and final transfer spot. Myers leading it. Hodnett.
Schlossberg in second, one more third. Schlossberg in the fourth spot. Now Schlossberg taps the ball on the back stretch. Side by side, father and son, Kevin and Sammy Swindell wait for the transfer spot. Kevin gets loose in turn number four. Sammy Swindell is going to take advantage on the high side. Sammy moves back by his son Kevin for the transfer spot, and now Jason Johnson will do the same. Car and Bill loose at the exit of the corner as the York excavating number one for the Bulldog. Out in front of the field as they cross the third first line on lap number three. Jason Myers leading by 1.5 seconds over Greg Hodnett. Brandon Bummer still third, Schlossberg in fourth, Sammy Swindell the final transfer spot. Jason Johnson in sixth, Kevin Swindell in seventh, Mike Dudley in eighth, Chris Bryan in ninth. Make that Bill Bryan in ninth, we saw Cliff in heat race number one. Twin cars, 13 and 13X here this evening. This time by, halfway home, cross flags displayed. Jason Myers putting it to the field in heat race number two. A 1.9 second lead now over the 77 of Greg Hodnett. Myers having things all his way. He works the top side around the speedway. Everybody right now up on the cushion. It's the fastest way around this one third mile over. Sammy Swindell solidly in the fifth and final transfer spot. Still about six car lengths behind the number 70 of Sam Schlossberg. Race leader Jason Myers now able to see slower traffic in front of him at the end of the straightaway as approaching the 13X machine of Bill Bryan. Two laps to go for your race leader as he crosses the line on the front stretch. Myers, Hodnett, Weber, Schlossberg, and Swindell the top five. Still Johnson, 6th, Kevin Swindell, 7th, Ridley, 8th, Bryant, ninth, White Flag being displayed. One third of a mile to go here in the second heat race event for the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars. Myers rolls into turns 3 and 4, pulls alongside of Bill Bryan, doesn't have to make the move. He'll pick up that heat race victory rather handily over the 77 of Hodnett. Rimmer in the third spot, Schlossberg in fourth, and Sammy Swindell fifth. Jason Myers in the Elite Landscaping car number 14, more hooked up than a high school football star at a University of Colorado recruiting party, picks up the victory. Finishing in the second spot, it was the Mannheim Auction 77 of Greg Hodnett. Third spot to Brandon Wimmer in the Wimmer Luck Motorsports 7TW. Fourth spot goes to Sam Schlossberg. Schlossberg driving the Northern Wilderness Outfitters car number 70. And in the fifth and final transfer spot, Sammy Swindell in the Jackpot Junction Casino car number 5. Cars in two by two formation for heat race number three. Again, 10 laps, top five finishers move to the main event. 15, Donnie Schantz, 7S, Jason Sides in row one. Seven, Craig Delansky, 71, Brian Leppo in row two. Eight, Brooke Tatnall, 11K, Craig Kinzer in row three. 25, Lance DeWeese, U1, Chad Layton in row four. 56, Trevor Lewis, 81, Bob Beidelman in row number five. Got word from the pit area, engine change taking place in Paul McMahon's number 11H. Green flag waves, this one is in the way. Shots down low, sides on the cushion, sides will lead them out of turn number two. Shots running in the second spot, Lepo third, Delansky fourth, Craig Kinzer in position number five, the transfer spot. Problems for Brian Lepo into the wall in turn three and four. Brian Lepo slams the outside for Kenny Wall in turn three and four, and the caution flag flies. Brian Leppo getting into the guardrail in turns three and four. Leppo had been running in the third position when the accident occurred over there at the end of the speedway. And preliminary report indicated damage to some big, big battle on the opening green. Time so far, the outside lane has been the quick one for the driver to grab the lead. Well, thus far, out of two heat races completed, it has been the outside front row starter getting the victory. Brian Paulus in heat race number one, Jason Myers in heat race number two, and then four rookie of the year back there in fourth. We're back to green. Now Craig Kinzer to the inside of Craig Delansky. Nice slide job there, and Craig Kinzer moves up to the third spot. Delansky back to fourth. Craig Kinzer, the first one to find something on the bottom of the speedway, now challenging Tony Schultz for the second spot. Couldn't make a move in three and four. Tries the bottom again in one and two. Craig Kinzer has found something fast on the bottom side of the speedway. Right on Schultz's back bumper as they exit turn number two. All of this taking place behind race leader Jason Sides as he crosses the start first line to complete lap number three. A 1.3 second advantage over Donnie Schultz. 
Quinn Kinsler in the third spot. Delansky for the now battle for the transfer spot. Of Tottenham holding off a charge by the new one of Chad Leighton. Leighton tries the bottom side. Saw how well it worked with Quinn Kinsler a little earlier, but Kinsler has gone back to the cushion in turns one and two. Brooke Tattnall high on the exit of turn number two, opens up the low side of the seat for Leighton. Now we'll go to the bottom of the block in three and four. It trips up high on the exit. Again, Chad Leighton trying to steal the transfer spot from the reigning Australian title holder. Halfway home, five laps down, five to go. Side shots, Kinzer Belansky, Tattnall, your top five. Again, Chad Leighton sticking to the bottom side of the speedway. Now slide job up in front of Tattnall. Tattnall comes back in and they make contact. Tattnall's into the wall and upside down. Leighton spinning on the back stretch. Collects lands the Weiss and the Weiss is upside down. Red flag conditions on the speedway. It started with Brooke Tattnall and Chad Leighton side by side for the fifth spot. Tattnall got into the wall, upside down. The contact sent Leighton spinning down the back stretch. Lance DeWeese with no place to go got into him and flipped the 25 car. Two cars upside down on the back straightaway. What a heartbreaking turn of events for all three of those drivers, especially Tattnall and Leighton. For about the last four or five laps, they've been running almost side by side through the corners. Leighton continuing to work the inside. Tattnall was on the outside. Leighton attempting to pull the slide job, unable to make it a clean one. It's Napa Auto Care Centers, always great supporters of the Thunder on the Hill Racing Series through our good friend Jeff Riley. You can contact Jim Gallagher at his Galco Communications Business Office located in Quakertown at 1-800-479-0955. Meanwhile, Lance DeWeese's Home America car number 25 being towed back toward the pit area as well. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of the fine sponsors that bring the World of Outlaws to you in the 2005 season and energy specialists. Field lining up for the restart of heat race number three with six laps down and four laps remaining. Jason Sides the leader, Donnie Schatz running second, Craig Kinzer third, Craig Delansky fourth, and now Trevor Lewis moving up to the fifth and final transfer spot, followed by Bob Beidelman in the sixth spot and Chad Layton restarting in seventh. Orange Cone out on the front stretch once again. Side stops on the lot pedal, we go back to green. Jason Sides pulling away from Tony Shots down the back stretch, watching Chad Layton try to come from the rear of the field to get back up into a transfer spot. Now tries to move on the inside of Bob Vitalman out of turn number four. Makes the move to the sixth spot, one position shy of a transfer. Meanwhile, a nice slide shot by Craig Kinzer. Craig Kinzer takes over second from Tony Shots. Craig Kinzer definitely has something working on the low side of turns one and two. Got by Delansky down there earlier, now takes second from Shots. Eight laps complete, two laps to go. Does Chad Layton have enough time to get by Trevor Lewis? There goes the tail on the back stretch in the race for the final transfer spot. White flag flies for race leader Jason Sides. Sides out in front by a straightaway. We're watching the battle for the transfer spot. Chad Layton all over Trevor Lewis. They race into turns one and two. Layton now goes to the high side. Lewis moves up to the top side of the block. Sides will look at the checkered flag out of turn number four. Picks up the win. Layton to the inside contact with Trevor Lewis, but Layton will hang on to the transfer position in the start finish line. Here's the finishing order for heat race number three. Jason Sides the winner in the Weatherington Tractor Service 7S. Craig Kinzer second in the Remy 11K. Donnie Schatz third in the Parker Stores 15. Craig Delansky fourth in the VMAC number seven. And on the last lap, grabbing the final transfer position, Chad Layton in the Bumper Bob Seafood car number U1. Again, 10 green flag racing laps with the top five finishers moving into the main event. Final heat race of the night. Lineup looks good behind the Hummer H2 place vehicle. We look for the start the next time around. The 6 of Tim Schaefer, the 83 of Tim Cady in row 1. 2, Joey Saldana, 21, Darren Pittman in row 2. 24, Terry McCarl, 20, Danny Lasowski in row 3. 88, H. Fred Raymer, 7C, Dave Cordiero in row 4. 35, Travis Rowlett, and 29, Chris Weiss in row 5.
the race out of turn number four, down to the green flag, still side by side. Keating on the high side gets the lead out of turn number two. Three wide for third, Pittman, Saldana, and McCoy. Pittman and Saldana still two wide into three and four, give it to Pittman. Now Danny Wasowski moves up and takes the final transfer start from McCoy out of turn number four. McCoy right back at him on the third stretch to gain it back. Terry McCoy and Danny Wasowski, two Knoxville race world veterans, going at it now for the final transfer spot here at the Grand Blue Speedway in heat race number four. Out in front of the field is Tim Cannon, Tim Schaefer running in the second spot. Darren Pittman third, now McCoy to the inside, slides up in front of Joey Saldana, they'll go wheel to wheel for the fourth spot. Saldana able to hang on, McCoy in fifth, the left to speed, Wasowski in sixth, Raymer in seventh, Cordier eighth, Riley in ninth, Price running in tenth. Three laps down, seven laps to go. Danny Wasowski on the outside looking in. He was the fourth fastest qualifier here this evening. Wasowski unable to do it. A big time smoke coming out of the 21 car of Darren Pittman. A smoke screen on the front stretch. Now it is cleared up as he enters the corner, but back on the back stretch. Smoke and there's problems in turn number four. Of course, sideways, it is the 29 of Chris Weiss. And boy, Tim Schaefer did a great job to avoid contact with him as Weiss sits sideways on the top side of turn number four. Yeah. Trying to hang on to third there with the engine smoke. We'll see if it reoccurs when we go back to full throttle racing action. Pittman picked up his first World of Outlaws A feature win in over a year and a half earlier this season at the 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas. Back to green flag racing. No smoke that time by out of Pittman's car. They rolled on the back stretch, still free of smoke there. Meanwhile, Saldana up to challenge Pittman for the third spot. Terry McCoy still fending off the advances of Danny Wasowski and Fred Raymer for the transfer, but now McCoy just to move to the inside of Saldana in turns one and two. Side by side, Raymer and Wasowski side by side for the sixth spot as well. Wasowski able to hang on on the back straight away. Out of turn number four, Tim Canning showing the way in this one. Now McCoy again to the inside of Joey Saldana, but wheel to wheel. McCoy slides up in front of the volcano, shows car number two, makes the pass as they exit the corner and roll down the back switch. Move McCoy up to third, Saldana in fourth. Now, Fred Raymer all over the 20 car of Danny Wasowski. That is a race for the sixth spot. They're side by side at the end of the front row. Raymer able to make the move to move to sixth. Caution flag again to this Chris Weiss in the same position, sideways at the top of turn number four. Some excellent battles going on out there. Some of the big guns in World of Outlaw Sprint Car Competition going at it. McCarl pulling a slide job and moving by Joey Saldana. Well, unfortunately for Chris Weiss, his World of Outlaws debut ends, short, ends uh, briefly after his first uh, heat race competition. Two spins, he's gone back to the pit area. We will see him later on in the B main, but two unassisted cautions in any event moves the car to the pit area. So Chris Weiss will be going back outside of turns one and two. Meanwhile, what a great battle we've been watching for that transfer spot. Now Fred Raymer is up to sixth, still not in a transfer position, but he will be starting right behind fifth place running Joey Saldana. Roll back to green. Down the front stretch into turns one and two. Saldana moves low to block Raymer, who catches the inside boom, allowing Lasowski to pull even with him on the outside. Lasowski can't make the pass on the back stretch. Two laps to go in heat race number four. Fred Raymer trying desperately to get by Joey Saldana, but Danny Lasowski still part of the mix. Raymer down low in one and two. Saldana gets the run off the cushion to pull away by two goal ends on the back straightaway. This time by a white flag in the air for your race leader, Tim Koenig. Terry McCoy now moving up on Derek Pittman, the race for third. Saldana still holding up Raymer. Raymer with a slide job in turns one and two there, side by side. Raymer couldn't make it work there. Checkered flag waving. Koenig wins it easily. Schaefer in the second spot. Pittman hangs on for third. McCoy in fourth and Joey Saldana the fifth and final transfer position. Official results from heat race number four, Tim Kading victorious in the Beef Packers 83. Second, Tim Schaefer in the Casey's General Store 6. Darren Pittman third in the Titan 21. Fourth, the Big Game Tree Stands 24 of Terry McCarl. And hanging on for the fifth and final transfer spot, Joey Saldana in the Volcano Joe's car number two. Wardenville, Pennsylvania, the Stoffers Brochure Service, overhead doors of Lancaster number 21. Andy moving up out of the micro sprint ranks, finished fourth in eight. We will be going with the sprint car dashes. The heat qualifiers will be lining up for the dashes. The two dashes.
Eight laps of racing ahead. Up front, we've got Brian Kobe Lars and Mike Kraus. Here they come for the green. Motoring into the turn. Look out, we've got a couple of cars getting together down here in the turn. Yellow lights will quickly come back on. 21 car of Andy Martin, the 95 Mark Lushy, and the 24 car of Ted Schmidt are the four cars involved. And many years of racing action here at Grandview Speedway. We're ready to go. Complete restart, eight laps ahead. Here they come. Motoring to the turn, Kobe Lars with the lead. Krause, oh, look at that move, three wide through the turn, heading down the back straightaway. Unbelievable action, Kobe Lars maintaining the number one spot for lap number one over Mike Krause. Into the turn, keep your eye on the 55 X car, heading down the back straightaway. That's Smith, Ryan Smith, and the other 55 is Steve Craig. They're battling side by side into the turn. Ryan Smith, Steve Craig battling off the turn. Smith and the SNS Speedway's car moving up a notch. Here comes the sixth car of Ed Steinle Jr. Good competitive racing action here during this second qualifying event. Down the back straightaway, Kobe Lars still leading the way. Craig is in the number two position. Looks like we've got caution on the Speedway. One car. That kid's impressive. Absolutely, here we go. He's up to third, ready for the restart. Kobe Lars brings him around. Kraus in second, back to green. Steinle next in line, then we've got the number 20 car of Carrie Becker next in line. Look at the action off the corner. Becker down the back straightaway, putting some pressure on. Here comes Smith now, up the second, getting by Kraus, using the inside lane again to do the job. Ryan Smith up to second, Kraus is third. Here comes Steinle, oh, look out! Turn number one, we've got Craig going around with a 55. Another car also going around, yellow lights coming on. Here we go. Ready for the restart, back to green. Into the turn, Smith on the inside of Kobe Lars. Wheel to wheel combat down the back straight away. Smith on the inside, Kobe Lars on the outside battling wheel to wheel into the turn. Full lap of side by side action, Kobe Lars maintains the lead. Here comes Steinle now, moving it on Kraus. Working the high side, getting too high to Steinle. Still side by side for the lead. Wheel to wheel action for the second consecutive lap. Smith on the inside, Kobe Lars on the outside, battling off the turn. Four car battle for third spot. Kraus has it. Steinle got a little high, pulls it back in. Now three wide in turn number two. Whoa, Steinle through the middle, battling with Andy Martin. Meanwhile, we've got a new leader out in front. It'll be Ryan Smith leading the way, getting by Kobe Lars after working for three laps. Upside by side action. The number 20 of Carrie Becker right in the action as well. Two car battle for third, two car battle for fifth, heading down the back straightaway. This time by will be the two lap signal. Ryan Smith leading Kobe Lars, who lost the lead, now drops to the inside line. Down the straightaway, Steinle now on the inside, making some moves after getting a little too high, costing himself some spots. He now picks up four positions. Yellow, turn number three. And four. The number 61, Jim Jackson, redrawing for their starting spots in tonight's main event. Here they come. Green flag waves, one lap dash. Smith leading the way, Kobe Lars again trying the outside. Here comes Steinle to the inside of Kobe Lars off the turn. Smith maintaining the lead, heading down the back straightaway on the final circuit. Kobe Lars is in second spot. Steinle will be in third. Here's a checkered flag off the corner. Ryan Smith, your winner. Heat race number two into the record books. The victory after starting 10th, the 55. X is Ryan Smith. Second, the 49, Brian Kobe Lars. by against six racing laps to determine the inside top six rows of tonight's main event. 21, Darren Pittman, five, Sammy Swindell from the front row, 11, K. Craig Kinzer, 11, Steve Kinzer in row two, seven, Craig Delansky, 28, Brian Paulus in row number three. Side by 
side out of the fourth corner. Green flag is holding in a third putting attempt to take the early lead. Sammy Swindell running second. Steve Kenzer third. Craig Kenzer fourth. Now Sammy to the inside of Darren Pittman. Battle for the lead into turn three and four. Slide job complete. Give it to the three-time champion. Steve Kenzer to the inside of team number second out of turn number four. Kenzer now to the inside of Swindell. Slide job here and now Steve Kenzer has the lead of the stacker two dash. Swindell ran back alongside of him. Now wheel to wheel into turn three and four. Steve Kenzer able to hang on as Swindell had to get hard onto the binders to avoid contact. Craig Kenzer now to the inside passing Darren Pittman to take over the third spot. Steve Kinzer leading it, Sammy Swindell second, Craig Kinzer third, Darren Pittman fourth. Now Pittman challenged for that position by Brian Paulus. Give it to Paulus. Pittman dropping toward the back of the field. He's got problems in the 21 car. Pittman will come to a stop on the outside of turn three and four. The caution flag will fly. Caution flag waving for Darren Pittman, who stops in turns three and four. By heat action, now having tire problems, so uh, he's been up against it all evening long. In World of Outlaws 8 Beach Victory, Steve Kinzer getting win number 520 on his career on Saturday night at the Lumberville Speedway as we go back to green. Now Brian Paulus up to challenge Craig Kinzer. They race for the third spot down the back straightaway. Kinzer down low, Brian Paulus up on the cushion. Paulus tries to make the move out of turn number four, but not enough room to make it happen. Two laps to go in the stacker two dash. Kinzer's lead, 1.09 seconds as they cross the start-finish line. White flag waving, Steve Kinzer, who has won the last two World of Outlaws events here at the Grandview Speedway, looking to start on the pole in 2005. Rolls down the back stretch and into turns three and four. The Quaker State Q Royals car number 11 will start out front tonight. Steve Kinzer wins the stacker two dash. Swindell second, Craig Kinzer third, Brian Paulus fourth, Craig Delansky fifth, and of course Darren Pittman credited with sixth. Steve Kinzer headed toward the victory lane on the front stretch. We'll do a quick photo op for the folks at Stacker 2. And then bring the cars out for the second dash here this evening. Official finishing order, Steve Kinzer the winner in the Quaker State 11. Finishing second, Sammy Swindell in the work in America number five. Third to Craig Kinzer in the Remy 11K. Finishing fourth, Brian Paulus in the Arnold Transportation 28. Fifth spot to the VMAC number seven of Craig Delansky. And credited with sixth, Darren Pittman in the Titan Garages, car number 21, Speedway. <laughs> Stacker two banner being unfurled on the front stretch. Stacker to the diet and energy specialist bringing you the dash, first dash for the World of Outlaws in 2005. And of course also the title sponsor for the World of Outlaws Stacker 2 late model series. Dash, Sam Schlossberg on the inside of row number three. Fairly new to sprint car competition in central Pennsylvania, but Jeff Allen, he's no stranger to the Grandview Speedway. Absolutely not. Sam, for a number of years, was a regular weekly competitor here every Saturday night in the late model division here and racked up a number of feature wins before embarking on a sprint car career last year, which included a win in central Pennsylvania. So this is his second year in 410 racing, doing quite well. Saldana and Lucas Wolf from row one, McCarl and Brandon Wimmer in row two, Schlossberg and Jason Myers from row number three, green flag waves on the second dash. And it turns one and two, it is Joey Saldana out to the early lead, Lucas Wolf running second, Terry McCarl third, Brandon Wimmer fourth, side by side for Biff Schlossberg to the inside of Jason Myers. Myers comes back at him on the high side of the speed where Schlossberg has the advantage off the bottom, he'll hold on to the first side of the lead lap number one. McCall to the inside of Lucas Wolf trying to take over the second spot. Can't get it done there. Still side by side. Now Jason Myers around Schlossberg to take over fifth. The Browns third bullet. Joey Saldana is now wheel to wheel for the second spot. Slide job coming up from Terry McCall. McCall and Wolf wheel to wheel. Still side by side down the back straightaway. Wolf able to hang on to the second spot as they race toward three and four. This time by halfway home, three laps down, three laps complete. Again, McCarl to the inside of Lucas Wolf trying to take over the second spot. Slide job happens there, a little bit of contact there. Lucas Wolf has to get on the binders. And Terry McCarl now up to the second spot, really getting Lucas Wolf to third. Saldana, McCarl, Wolf, Wimmer, Myers, and Schlossberg, your running order. 
This time by White Flag Waves, one lap to go in the second dash of the World of Outlaw Sprint Car. Joey Saldana leading at Terry McCall, closing slightly but running out of time. Checkered flag is in the air. The Brownsburg Bullet is outside of zone number one. McCall finishes second, Lucas Wood in third, Brandon Wimmer fourth, Myers fifth, and Sam Schlossberg in sixth. Joey Saldana 